Magandang gabi po, Pilipinas. Good evening po to all our viewers in the Philippines. And uh, before I will begin, I just want to say thank you sa ating mga early bird na attendees for this seventh webinar. Pang seven na po nating webinar. And I want to say thank you again to our early birds. Rowena, kayo po yung number one uh, na nag-join ng live webinar na to. Enelita, Ashi, Rose, Jexter, Julia. Uh, we have work enough to do. That's the uh, handler name. Uh, Rosalie, Amorfina, Santos, Roder, Sherna, uh, Rhea, Marilyn, Angel, and Daisy. Thank you for joining us on time. As you know, we always begin on time and we will try to finish it on time as well for tonight. Just like Rob said, this is our seventh webinar now for a cause. And to begin with, hindi mawala siyempre ang isi-share ko yung projects na nagawa natin for the past for the past year. Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng supporters ng Lapis ng Pangarap campaign na inumpisahan namin last month. As of today, Nakapagbigay na po tayo ng lapis at school supplies sa 23 schools, serving 6,571 students in Anda, Pangasinan. Nagbigay ito ng pag-asa sa mga bata at sanay patuloy silang mangarap para sa magandang bukas. Samahan niyo po ako sa adikaing makaabot ang lapis ng pangarap sa iba't ibang sulok ng Pilipinas. Muli, maraming salamat po. Bakit po lapis ng pangarap? A boy used to stay after school searching for any pencils left under the chairs that he can still use. In many remote areas in Anda, Pangasinan, there are still thousands of kids needing our help. Um, I also went to different places and different schools sharing pencils and school supplies through Lapis ng Pangarap campaign. I also share my life experiences Sa kaalaman po ng lahat, I also work as a janitor sa Manila para makapagtapos po ng Bachelor of Science in Mathematics uh, for teachers. And after four years, tawa po ng Panginoon, ay nakapagtapos po naman tayo at nagturo sa Philippines for four years. And then, 12 years po sa US and four years po sa Singapore. So again, there are still thousands of kids needing our support. 
So last year, we also launched the Inspiring Minds Transforming Lives Project to help our kids. Sa second project po natin yan, na Inspiring Minds Transforming Lives, nakapag-raise po tayo ng 140,000 para sa mga estudyante at teachers ng Malong Elementary School sa Pangasinan. Ang third project na nilaunch po natin last year din ay tinawag kong We Are In This Together. So in this fundraising campaign, I initiated, uh, the purpose is to unite the 18 barangays in Anda, Pangasinan and also bring together our friends from US, Singapore, and even OFWs around the world. And because of everyone's support, nakapag-raise po tayo ng 473,000 para po sa uh, mga estudyante and uh, teachers ng uh, Pangasinan. Those are our three major projects last year. And again, with the support of our friends from the Philippines, US, and Singapore, those projects were successful. And uh, this July 15th, we're also launching another project entitled Brigada Escuela Adapt a School Project. So, kung sinuman po sa inyo ang willing na mag support sa ating uh, project na to this July 15th to support public school public schools in the Philippines uh, for your donations and inquiries, reach out to celsoacademy at gmail.com or you can message me at Gani Celso on uh, Facebook Messenger as well. All right, uh, at this time, I'd like you also to support Celso Academy by doing two things. First, if you have not subscribed yet to Celso Academy, could you please do that at this time? And also like the Celso Academy FB page. Ang mga certificates po ay laging pinapost ko at 8 p.m. sa Celso Academy FB, FB page. So again, try to like and follow the FB page para po updated kayo kung kailan available ang ating mga um, certificates. So I'll give you about a minute to do that. Again, like and follow our FB page, Salsa Academy, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Salsa Academy then, and uh, click on the bell button pop to get the latest videos. While you're doing that, I'm gonna give a shout out to our viewers. We have Janice, Willie Tangunan from Tarlac, Erlinda Ramos from Tarlac, Maricar from Rojas Palawan, Palawan, Willie Tangonan, Catherine 
uh, Migayano from Bukidnon, Ivy from Cebu, Roland, good evening, na Nagaraha, Jennifer Katungal, thank you for watching, Maricel Sardinio from Las Piñas, Jeanette Miliares, thank you for watching from Bicol, Rowena Taiza from Aklan, uh, Joel Gayak, and I'm going to do more shout outs later. So let us know that you're watching by typing your um, locations in the comment section right now. So again, make sure you guys like and follow Celso Academy FB page to get the latest on uh, notifications on the availability of certificates. And don't, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. All right. So for today's, for tonight's, for tonight's agenda, the first one is regarding to engage everyone in the instructional video analysis. So we're gonna look at uh, my teaching video, not the new one, but it's actually recorded um, eight years ago. So we're gonna watch that video and analyze, focusing on the student engagement, questioning and cooperative learning structures. The second target is that we're going to learn eight um, cooperative learning structures and teach like a champion uh, technique. Uh, these are the strategies that will orchestrate student engagement and promote productive discussion. Um, for the strategies, we will be using uh, the book, Teach Like a Champion. Uh, this is really a good uh, resource to, to use in the classroom. So there's about 70 um, techniques that you can use depending on the purpose. So this is one thing that I use. I also use the Kagan Cooperative Learning. There's 200 different structures that you can use in your classroom to orchestrate student engagement and promote uh, productive discussion. And I will try to make this uh, webinar tonight as interactive as possible. So I really need your participation, especially for the think, pair, share, and so on. All right, so, and also we will do some word problems. Uh, it's math review number four, so we're gonna solve some math questions as well. And these are word problems uh, based on um, the problems that I created when I traveled around the world as well. All right, so the first thing that I'd like you to do, about 98% of our viewers tonight are teachers. So think for a moment, and I'd like you to reflect on your classroom routine for the first five minutes of your class. What's happening in your five minutes of class? I'll give you about one minute to think about it. You're going to describe your classroom routine for the first five minutes of class. And I will call this activity the Think Right Round Robin. So basically for the Think Right Round Robin, the first thing that you need to do is, if you do this in a classroom, first is students think about the response to the question. So give them the thinking time. Second, you need to ask the students to write in their notes. But right now, since it's a live webinar, I'm gonna have you type your responses in the comment section. And then after that, using round robin, you can take turns in sharing the responses to the question. So again, think for a moment, describe your classroom routine for the first five minutes of class. What do you usually do in five minutes? I'll give you a minute and start typing in the comment section. While you're thinking and typing your answers to the comment section, I will give shout out to our viewers again. We have Enelita from CDO, Angel, thank you for watching, Agnes, Teresita from Caloocan. Um, we have Robin, thank you for watching, Zini, thank you for watching, and Jennifer.
Zeni said uh, for the first five minutes, his routine is prayer, attendance, checking, fixing, reflection. Agnes said checking of attendance. I'm going to post some of your responses in the lower section of your screen. From Maya, he said, aside from checking the attendance, sometimes I ask my students how they feel on that particular day. From Jaria, prayer attendance. So looks like prayer is a commonality uh, in your five minute routine. Thirty seconds. Um, if you have not responded yet, please do so. From Karen, checking the cleanliness of the classroom, behavior, check and attendance. I also like uh, Juanita's response, asking how they feel for that day. Oh, that's true. There's also uh, from Jobert, flag ceremony, right? There's also flag ceremony in the Philippines, usually once, uh, once a week on Mondays. Sharing good thoughts from uh, Imelda Castro. I think it varies from school to, to school as well. There's some schools where students stay in the classroom and teachers just rotate from one classroom to the next. Uh, in our case, teachers stay in the classroom and students just um, come to our classes. So I have a different routine. All right, 15 more seconds, and I'm going to share my first five-minute routine here in Singapore. All right, so thank you for sharing your five-minute classroom routine, the first five minutes classroom routine in your, in your classes. Um, just like Rob said, here in Singapore, the students travel from one classroom to the next. So there is a five-minute passing period. So what I do in that first few minutes, in that five-minute routine for my class, uh, I go outside, welcome the students, and greet them at the door, and then they enter the classroom. The moment they enter the classroom, on their screen, whether it's projected on the white screen or the TV, students will go to their assigned seats right away, and they will begin with their Do Now activity. And I hope that during that five-minute period, I think one big no-no when using that five minute is checking the attendance, calling the names of 30 students. I hope that you don't do that anymore. Um, just to save some time, uh, you can check the attendance by just referring to the, the seating chart, right? So again, for me, while they're doing the do now activity in that first five minutes, um, the students are doing the problem and I am doing the attendance while, while they're working on the do now activities. Um, when it comes to virtual learning, it varies uh, from March to June, we transition from the regular uh, classroom setting to virtual and we use a Zoom. So instead of reading them at the door, Virtually, we need to admit them individually on Zoom. Um, that way, we can ensure the safety of every student. Because on Zoom, um, outsiders can join your class. So just, just a hint for, use, for those teachers using the virtual learning this August. Make sure that you change your Zoom setting um, to make sure that outsiders cannot join your class. 
because if they have if they have the link to your Zoom classes, then anyone can join. So to ensure safety, make sure that you admit your students one at a time. And again, the second is I post the Google Slides on Google Classroom. We've been using Google Classroom for the last three years now. So I usually post this on the day of the class. Um, so students have access to the uh, Google Slides for the day. That includes the do now, the activities for the day, the homework, the videos, everything. So it's a one-stop shop for the kid. So in that first five minutes, while I'm asking the students to, while I'm checking the attendance, admitting the students through Zoom, the students are also doing uh, the do now for five minutes. So your goal right now, transitioning from the traditional classroom to virtual, is to make that regular classroom setting experience as close as possible to the virtual classroom setting. And that's what I'm trying to do uh, when we transition from the traditional classroom to the virtual classroom. So it's very the same. Um, I welcome the kids and then the students begin with the do now right away. Uh, and they have about five minutes working on the do now. So this is just a sample uh, do now activity for my kids during the virtual learning. One thing that I always remind them in that do now slide is reminding them to submit their homework on Google Classroom. Because let's face it, sometimes students forget to turn in their homework. So uh, that's the first thing that they can see. Uh, it's just a good reminder for them to turn in their homework on Google Classroom. And then students will begin right away with the uh, do now questions. So what I'm gonna have you right now is that do work on the do now problem. I'm gonna give you about three minutes to solve this math problem as your do now activity. So this is a math problem um, that I got when I traveled to Dubai uh, last year. So I'll give you about three minutes to work on this problem. This is your do now activity and type your answers in the comment section if you have the answers already. I'll give you three minutes. And I will take this time as well to give shout out to our viewers. Good evening, Rowena, watching from, from Bulacan, Myrene, Henry from Makati City, Imelda Castro, thank you for watching. Mabel Jimenez, Ramesh, Joan from Sambuanga del Norte. Joan uh, Imelda Castro, thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments. Joan from Catanduanes, thank you for watching. So again, this is our do now activity. Please solve the math problem and type your answers in the comment section. I hope we have um, some math teacher audience for tonight and we also have some um, good in mathematics. Although this is just ratio and proportion, so I know that you can solve this problem. Mashai from uh, Davao de Oro, thank you for watching. Gregoria from Pampanga. Maria from Bohol. Amorfina, uh, thank you for sharing your answer. Give it a try, you guys. Try the do not problem and um, share your answers in the comment section. Vincent is watching from Agusan del Sur. Internet connection in the Philippines is always a struggle. So I'll try to talk a little bit slower so you could catch up. Gabriel from Mexico, Pampanga, thank you for watching. All right, uh, type your answers right now. Looks like we don't have a lot of uh, math teachers tonight. 
most of our activities are about math problems. So please bear with me for tonight's activity. Um, good evening, Marlene from Tanza Cavite. Thank you for watching. All right, before I will explain the solution to this ratio and proportion, I'm gonna go back to the uh, do now slide right now. I just like to emphasize that in the do now activity, one thing that you probably notice here is that there is an answer key for the do now problem. So when they're finished, students can check their answers right away. And also the do now activity number two is an enrichment. If you know that you have, especially for my class, I have um, several kids that are gifted so I try to include um, enrichment activities for the students because these type of questions can be solved in two minutes. So giving them an enrichment activity uh, will help them later on uh, in improving their math skills. In eighth grade, I have students um, doing geometry in grade nine, algebra two and pre-calculus. So I need to differentiate the instruction as well, and even the assignments and um, assessments. All right, so I'm seeing um, answers right now. Thank you for sharing your answers. Uh, Roy, Rosalie, uh, Nelson, I'm seeing mostly right answers, but we also have incorrect answers. But again, thank you for, for trying. So here's our explanation to this problem. Today we're traveling to Dubai and solve a word problem involving ratio and proportion. A tourist traveled to Dubai, UAE to see the iconic landmark Burj Khalifa, originally named Burj Dubai. The six-foot tourist is standing next to the building. The tourist is casting a shadow 1.5 feet in length, while the building is casting a shadow of 680.5 feet. How tall is Burj Khalifa? Give it a try and play the video whenever you're ready for the solutions. Here's the detailed solution to this problem. First, we will set up ratio and proportion, comparing the height and shadow of the person and the building. In this problem, the six foot tourist is casting a shadow of 1.5 feet. So that is six feet over 1.5 feet. On the other hand, the building is casting a shadow of 680.5 feet, which is our denominator, and we're solving for the height, so X is missing. So the equation that we have is 6 feet over 1.5 feet is equal to x over 680.5. By cross multiplication, we multiply 1.5 by x, so we have 1.5x, and we also multiply 6 times 680.5. So the new equation now is 1.5x is equal to 4083. Doing the inverse operations, we need to divide both sides by 1.5. 1.5 divided by 1.5 is 1, so we have 1x. And dividing 4,083 by 1.5, the answer is 2,722 feet. This is the actual height of Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Here's our second solution. For solution number two, let's compare the height 6 and the shadow 1.5 feet in length. Since the height of the person is 4 times its shadow, the same pattern must happen for the building as well. To find the height of the building, we're simply multiplying the shadow 680.5 by 4. So 680.5 times 4 is equal to 2,722 feet, which is the height of the building Burj Khalifa. Thank you for watching. All right, so thank you for those um, teachers or viewers who participated in that do now activity. One thing that I do during virtual learning is I do the silent uh, silent round of applause. Or you can do this or you can do uh, a silent round of applause uh, just to engage them. Or also through Zoom, 
You can also you you also have there the different uh, emojis that you can use um, to allow the students to participate and uh, give reinforcement as well. And here's our second do now question. There's actually two uh, word problems on ratio one proportion. So here's our second uh, do now um, activity. The question is how high is the statue? Same thing, I'll give you about two minutes to, to answer this do now activity and I hope that you participate again, even you're, if you're even if you're not a math teacher, I think I think that you could do this uh, math problem. So this is a math problem I took when I traveled to New York last summer, and I tried to incorporate um, travel uh, problems because my students come from more than fifty countries here in Singapore. So we always talk about their travel experiences, things like that. So this is one common interest among the students. So I share uh, word problems from the uh, travels that I've been to. So again, you have about two minutes to solve this problem. While you're doing that uh, math problem, I'm gonna give shout out as well to our viewers. Vanessa from Latinidad Binguet, thank you for watching. Uh, Roy does already have an answer. Marichu from Butuan. Amorfina has an answer already. Uh, Emmanuel from Aklan, thank you for watching. Vanessa, Emmanuel, Marichu, um, thank you for watching, good evening. Marisa from Paranaque, Elena from Dagupan, Ruth Sabayao, thank you for for watching. One tip when you guys are creating do not problems is also try to make it about five minute problem. Uh, if it's longer than five minutes, it's gonna take longer. If it's longer than that, then you may lose the interest of your kids. So try to limit it to about five minutes of do now activity. That will be awesome. So once you have your answers to that uh, problem, please do it right now. Type your answers in the comment section. Wow, we have uh, viewers that are good in ratio and proportion. Thank you for sharing your answers right now. And I hope that you consider also using uh, Google Classroom. It's a really a powerful tool in engaging your students, whether it's the traditional classroom setting or uh, virtual learning, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, um, that's also a powerful tool. So students will have access to your Google Slides, all the materials, um, whether it's PDF or videos, um, students can access your resources. All right, 15 more seconds, and then we're going to go over this problem. We have several answers right now in the comment section. So again, thank you for sharing your answers. We have mostly right answers. I think everyone got the right answer for this question number two. All right, so now let's reveal the answers. Um, even if you have, even if you didn't try the problem, um, I hope that you Today we're going this. to solve word problems involving ratio and proportion. Ghani traveled to New York to visit the Statue of Liberty. Ghani Hold on, I'm gonna redo that. Today we're going to solve word problems involving ratio and proportion. Ghani traveled to New York to visit the Statue of Liberty. Ghani is six feet tall and his shadow is five feet long. At the same time of day, the statue's shadow is 255 feet long. What is the height of the Statue of Liberty 
from the base of the pedestal to the tip of the torch. Give it a try and play the video whenever you're ready for the solutions. Here's the detailed solution to this problem. In this problem, we know that Ghani is six feet tall and his shadow is five feet. Also, we're given that the shadow of the statue is 255 feet long. And the problem is asking for the height of the Statue of Liberty. In solving word problems like this, we need to set up first the equation using ratio and proportion. So this problem involves height and shadow. So we will use the fraction height over shadow. Let's start first with Ghani. Ghani is six feet tall and his shadow is five feet in length. Since the problem happened at the same time, the ratio of the height and the shadow of the person and the building should be equal. So we will write equal to, we don't know the height of the building, so we will represent that as the X. And the shadow is 255 feet. I will show you two methods. For the first method, let's take a look at the denominators 5 feet and 255 feet. What will you multiply with 5 to get 255? And you can do that by dividing 255 by 5. And this is times 51. When you multiply 5 times 51, that is equal to 255. So since for the denominator, we multiply the first fraction by 51, the same thing should happen for the numerator. So this means we also need to multiply 6 by 51 to get the value of x. And 51 times 6 is 306. So this means that the height of this statue is 306 feet. And now for our method number 2. Solving this ratio and proportion, we can simply cross multiply, which means we need to multiply 5 times x, which is 5x. And we also need to multiply 6 times 255. Now, instead of multiplying 6 and 255, I will divide both sides by 5 right away. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so we have 1x. And now I can mentally simplify 255 divided by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So now I can simply multiply 6 times 51, which is 306. So the value of x is 306 feet. And this is a valid answer. The actual height of the Statue of Liberty is 305 feet and 6 inches. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing. All right, just like Rob said uh, a while ago, the most important thing I think of the 55 minute class is the first five minutes of your, of your class. So the way you start your class. So make sure that you follow the routine on a daily basis. The acronym TLAC stands for Teach Like a Champion Technique. Again, that is Teach Like a Champion Technique. It's very common, but it's really the first routine that affects the classroom culture, uh, especially when the students enter your classroom. Also, make sure that the entry routine is about making a habit out of what's efficient, productive, and scholarly after the greeting and the students take their seats and class begin, begins. Um, I also wanna emphasize that I hope none of the viewers today spend about five minutes or 10 minutes just checking the attendance and making sure that um, the students are on their assigned seat. So again, it's really important that you are following the same routine on a daily basis so students know the expectation. That's really crucial um, setting up your 60 minute class. And again, when it comes to entry routine, um, it's really powerful to have a do now activity for them 
Um, also, students should never ask themselves, what are they supposed to do when they enter the classroom? So uh, beginning of the school year, you need to establish that routine. Students need to know what they're supposed to do the moment they enter your classroom, okay? And it does happen, right? So we have some kids that they always pretend they don't know what they're supposed to do. So from the very first day of the, the class in August 24, when you do that, make sure you establish that um, entry routine and the do now activity. And just like Rob said, also the do now activity should take about five minutes only to complete. And I highly suggest that the do now activity also includes a written product um, that makes it um, to make the students more accountable uh, in that five minute period of time, okay? So again, make sure you use the routine entry and the do now um, activity. These are teach like a, again, those two techniques are based from the teach like a champion um, technique. We have about 70 techniques depending on the purpose. So if you haven't available a copy of this book, you may want to consider that as well. It also comes with a video on how to uh, implement those different techniques. So again, the book is Teach Like a Champion. All right, so, and now, um, before we continue with the, the middle of the class, please take note of this code. The attendance verification code will be needed when you're doing the uh, feedback survey or the evaluation form tonight. So make sure you take note of this code for you to be able to get your e-certificate when completing your survey. The, the verification code is TLAC. That stands for Teach Like a Champion, okay? So again, please take note of this attendance verification code. I'm gonna be showing this code um, two more times throughout the, the live streaming. So again, take note of that uh, attendance verification code. Uh, live streaming is delayed for about 10 to 15 minutes. I'll try to, to slow down. All right, for the, for the next slide, this is the learning pyramids. Um, I'd like you to look at this diagram right now and just try to observe what do you notice, what do you wonder in this learning pyramid. I'd like you to type your answers in the comment section. So again, um, you have about 30 seconds to think and then type your answers in the comment section. What do you notice? What do you wonder about this diagram? Thank you for your comment, uh, Marn Rose Padau. Uh, and Alita, thank you for watching. Geraldine, Marisa, uh, where can I buy that book, sir? Um, this book's actually, you can actually purchase it on Amazon um, or also from the publisher. I'll, I'll, I'll give you more information about ordering of the book. So again, what do you notice? What do you wonder in this learning pyramid? Please type your comments in, uh, please type your answers in the comment section. That is correct, Jorlin, percentage is um, decreasing from top to bottom. Mazai said higher attention rate when students are participating than passive teaching method. 
Lean said participatory teaching methods have a greater factor. Rosh said students learn more if they can participate in the class and if they can teach other students. That's really true. From G, knowledge retention is higher in participatory teaching methods compared to the passive teaching methods. From Claudette, Claudette Aguirre, learn best when engagement with other than uh, listening in lectures. I just wanna emphasize also that the effectiveness of any teaching method as presented in this learning pyramid will also be influenced by your students' unique learning style. We know that all the students are different and they have different learning styles. So some students retain and recall information best through visual, right? We have visual learners, while others are oral learners, so they learn more when it's auditory. So to maximize the effectiveness of your teaching, make sure that you know your students' learning styles. Also, um, remember that the key here is to vary your, again, um, I just wanna emphasize also here that the key is to vary your method of teaching. Don't just use one um, instructional strategy. Don't assume just because the learning pyramid suggests that lectures are the less effective study method for retaining information, that lectures aren't important. They are important. Lectures are still very important. Um, each of the learning methods presented in the learning pyramid are important, just like Rob said. Uh, even if it's difficult for you to remember everything that is taught during lectures, the notes you take during lecture may be vital to your ability to participate. So lecture is still useful. Again, I just wanna emphasize that you need to vary your teaching method and focus on the methods and learning styles that yield the best results for your students. All right, so at this time, I will engage you guys in the instructional video analysis. So in this video, um, I will show you the part two. The part two is the classroom discussion with my kids. And this video was taken uh, eight years ago in 2012 when I did my national board certification. So I'd like your participation in this instructional um, video analysis. So we will be watching the video. While we're watching the video, your task is to identify some missed opportunities or areas of improvement in this um, instruction. This is not the best teaching video. And again, this video is taken um, eight years ago in Los Angeles, California. Um, so yeah, so that's one thing you need to identify. Sorry. Again, you need to identify missed opportunities or areas of improvement. And if there are some good teaching, I'd like you to include that in the comment section as well. Okay. So now let's watch this uh, dimensional analysis. Think for a moment, which of these boxes here you think will give you the maximum value? So think for a moment for 30 seconds. Now I want you to turn to a partner. And discuss again. Thanks up. 
Okay, at this time, could you please share your discussion, um, Joanna? Do you disagree with her? This one, she said that definitely this one will not give you the maximum volume. Maria, talk about what you guys discussed. So, my partner and I decided to go with box three or four. First three. Maybe this is box three and four. Anyone else who thinks three and four will give you the maximum volume? Okay. We need to uh, talk about that. Yeah, well, we're going to be a different partner, but then, yeah, like, like, we're just a different free speech. It's like, yeah, they're different. It's like, like, compared to those ones, yeah, they're like, they have a bit of free speech. It's like, they're free free speech. You want to add? Yes, you want to? Like, maybe even two, like, present. Which one? The two. Okay, so for now, let's put it here. Okay. Now, so here we still have remaining uh, four open boxes. Why do you, which one of these boxes do you guys think will definitely not give you the maximum value? Yes, Ms. Yeah. Number eight. Why do you think that? Because it is definitely the top bit. It's the hardest one, but it's very thin, which I think that the most thing, since it's a small measurement, it kind of comes up a lot. Francisco, will you agree with that? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. So yeah, as I also said, it's tall, but it's really thin. So then the one that I thought had much more money was box number three. Okay. And when I visualize it, which I don't mind it, it will, like, it will be a lot more obvious than box number three. Is it obvious, you guys? Yeah. You can even see box number eight now. Okay. So we can eliminate box eight. Anything else? Yes. Go ahead, Giovanni. Which one? Go ahead. Okay. Everyone agrees to that? Yes. Okay. So now we still have five. Is it difficult to decide which of those five boxes now will actually give us maximum volume? Yes. Why is it difficult? They're pretty close. Like, um, the inches are very, very close. It's just like they're all double digits. So. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. The height is higher, but what's happening to the length? Okay. Now, so using this 3D models alone, what we could do is basically make predictions. Okay. Those predictions could be right. Okay. But at this time, I want you to go back to your teams and I want you to look at the numerical and graph. All right, so at this time, if you could please type your type in the comment section, uh, what are some of the missed opportunities or areas of improvement uh, in that short teaching video? I'll give you about one minute. Please type in the comment section, you guys. Thank you for participating. I know you guys are delayed for about 15 seconds. I'll give you some time to type your um, feedback in the comment section. What are some of the missed opportunities or good teaching, if there are, in that short video clip? While responding to the um, activity, I'd like to give a shout out again to our viewers. Thank you for our 164 concurrent viewers. Uh, Daniel, thank you for watching. Aldrin, Janet, Ruena, Marichu, uh, Mitokor. Thank you for watching. Mitukor, I really like the uh, the comment that you have. I think that the time is not ample for the activity. 
uh, from Imelda, give pupils time for group discussion. Mari Chu, the instruction is not clear for the students. So in 2012, I recorded um, this activity in my math class and submitted it in my national board certification. And the purpose is to reflect on the instruction so you could improve it the next time you're going to, to present the same lesson. So it doesn't have to be a perfect, doesn't have to be a perfect um, recorded video. So there are some missed opportunities that I had um, eight years ago. And I agree with a lot of uh, your comments, Nelson and uh, Merlita as well. Thank you for those comments. But the first missed opportunity, I don't know if you've noticed it, but the teacher stated that students have 30 seconds to think. However, if you notice, after 10 seconds only, um, he had the students start sharing already. So I already saw in that comment section as well, um, it's really important to provide enough time, process time for the students to think before they share. Okay, so that's one um, missed um, opportunity. Thank you, Janet, giving enough time for the students to to analyze and think. The second, the second missed opportunity is during student sharing, the teacher just stayed in one spot. Um, if I were to re teach this lesson again, I would probably walk around to make sure that I hear the conversations going on in the classroom rather than just staying on one spot, right? And the third one, I also um, see this comment, I saw this comment from at least three of our audience. The teacher should have provided a longer time or waited until conversation, until almost everyone is done sharing. So try to please, try to, so I would say try to be mindful about the discussion going on. Um, if, you, if you still hear students having that conversation, then don't move on to the next activity. Um, if you watch the video carefully, the teacher already said time's up and the students are still uh, engaged in the discussion. So it's really important to provide enough time for the students to think, but also to share their, um, their thinking. I noticed that in that activity also, some students were not able to share. Uh, only one person were, was able to, to share uh, in that discussion. Um, now, are there any uh, good teaching in that video? I'll give you about one minute to share your responses. Um, if you see any, if there's any, if there's none, that is fine. What are some good teaching practices in that, uh, in that video? Please type your uh, feedback in the comment um, section, please. Thank you for your comments, uh, Fatima, Arlene. From Imelda said, it's really very good to use manipulatives in this lesson. Providing um, instructional materials from Lean. 
Um, the teacher let other students share their knowledge and observation. Okay, 30 more seconds, and then I will um, share my personal reflection during this video. Catherine said, learning by doing. By the way, before they engage in that activity, the first activity given to them is that they have a rectangular cardboard and their first activity is to create an open box that will give the maximum volume. All right, to summarize some of your um, comments, the first one is that the teacher employ, I think, good questioning technique and provide thinking time although the thinking time is not sufficient for the students to, to have the ample time to think and share. Students are highly engaging and collaborative, as you can see in uh, different structures. The teacher engaged them in the whole class discussion, at the same time, um, think pair share activity as well. From Bethany, Bethany said there is sharing of ideas uh, between teachers and students, and there is also interaction um, among the students as well. So students and teachers use the 3D models to support their arguments and claims, which one uh, actually give the maximum volume. So yes, Jennifer, there is a collaboration. And dimensional analysis is a good hook to the next part of the lesson. Actually, after that video, the transitioning is the students will be creating numerical and graphical analysis. So in this short video clip, um, the teacher used timed pair share. So basically in timed pair share, if you notice, uh, the teacher announces the question or asks a question and then um, partner A shares, partner B listens. And then after that, switch roles. So basically partner B this time uh, shares and partner A listens. So this is called a timed pair share. But again, uh, one missed opportunity in that uh, video is the lack of thinking, thinking time for the students. And also the teacher involves them in the, the whole class discussion. All right. Now I'd like you to look at this picture. What is wrong with this picture? Do you see anything wrong in this picture? Please type your answers in the comment section. Again, please look at the picture and try to pinpoint what is wrong in that picture. Thank you for your comments, Mariela, Mitokor, Julimi, uh, Patrick. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for participating. Cherry, um, Lenilin, thank you for your insights as well. What is wrong in this picture? And uh, I highlighted some answers. One, one response from Juliet says, some students are inattentive, as you can see on the, the right side of this uh, picture. Some students are really uh, inattentive. 
Some students are paying attention, not all. Yeah, the the arrangement of the the arrangement of the chairs and tables is not appropriate for this type of discussion. Erlinda said some students are not interested. And there is from Zaida, Zaida said there is an inactive participation among students. One side of the class are attentive and the other, they're not, right? So how do we fix this? If you're going to reteach um, this lesson um, to make this better, I think one important technique that you can use using the Teach Like a Champion is cold calling. I wanna emphasize that in this, in that picture, there are already four students raising their hands. So what do you think will happen if four students are raised, already raise their hands? So that's why cold calling is really a powerful technique in engaging the students. Nowadays, um, it's been four years since I used this. I don't I, I highly discourage the students now to raise their hands when I ask questions. Because one thing that I observe is that when students raise their hands already, other students stop thinking. So one thing that I do is I ask a question, I pause, give them time to think, and then I call on students. But I don't ask them to raise their hands if they want to, to participate. So in order to make engaged participation the expectation, call on any students um, as much as possible. Try to discourage the kids from raising their hands. Again, the reason for that is if there's one hand already raised, the rest of the class stop thinking. So you may use the strategy as pause for a few seconds, to give them time to think, and then call on students randomly. But don't call on students who are raising their hands. So again, the purpose of uh, cold calling is to foster positive engagement in the work of the, the class, okay? So, um, in the traditional classroom setting, we have a class that's really quiet. That's the traditional classroom setting. So let's try to change that into a cooperative learning um, setting. And to do that, it's okay if the students are creating some healthy noise and making sure that they are learning. Next, from this traditional setting, we always say, keep your eyes on your paper, right? We want our students to work on their own. That's the traditional classroom setting. Let's try to transform that into a cooperative learning. And let's try to help each other, help your partner solve it. Again, from keep your eyes on your paper, to help your partner solve the problem. That's from traditional to the cooperative learning. Third one, from sitting quietly, we involve students to get up and look what others did. So that's the best way to engage your students in cooperative learning. Don't just sit there, but we need to encourage students to get up and participate in different activities. Talking is cheating, but we want our kids to be able to verbalize to learn. 
And as much as possible, if you allow the students to explain their work with a partner or with a team, that is a great opportunity to, uh, to engage the, the students. It's already 7.10. Um, so we're going to move on to the next slide. All right, so again, I just want to remind everyone about the attendance verification code. The attendance verification code is TLAC, or you can type 7113. Again, 7113. That is our attendance verification code for you to be able to, to get your certificate um, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Also, um, there's some of you asking how to order Teach Like a Champion. Um, I will post the information in the um, Celso Academy FB page, so you can order this. Um, but again, I think I, I got this when I attended training in uh, Michigan um, four years ago. And this cooperative, cooperative learning um, book. I also got this in San Diego when I attended a training on um, Kagan Cooperative Learning Structure. This comes with um, different activity sheets for... I also have uh, Kagan Cooperative for Geometry, for Mathematics in general, and I also have for, for Algebra 1. So, these are some resources that I got from the trainings when I attended them in Michigan and um, San Diego. All right, so the other activity that we're going to do now is a math question. And in the classroom, in the classroom, I usually use the rally coach um, activity. So for this rally coach activity, basically one student will solve the problem and the second student watches, listens, checks and coaches if necessary, guide partner A if needed. Again, partner A is solving the problem, partner B is giving some feedback, listening, checking the answer if right or wrong. And then they have to switch roles. So in a classroom setting, uh, this is a good strategy to make sure that every student is participating. And you can also do this uh, when you're doing a synchronous uh, virtual class in Zoom because you can create uh, groups of four or groups of two uh, in breakout rooms. So you can assign an activity where students work in pairs or work in four problems, uh, four problems. So, um, the last, this, these are actually two questions. One is a math problem from Lake Cebu, uh, Philippines. So try to answer this question. Instead of doing the rally coach, I'll give you time, viewers, to participate in doing this last two math problems, solving four for the time. One hour is really a short time to go over this webinar. So again, at this time, I'd like you to participate in answering this um, solving for time word problem. I'll give you about one minute. I think you guys could do that. If you have answers to this question, please type your answers in the comment section. Thank you, Christine, for your comments.
Type your answers in the comment section. Or I'm, I'm seeing some answers right now. Lena Lynn, thank you for asking, asking about the price of the books. I will share the information as well in the Salsa Academy FB page. I'm not sure about the price right now for the books, but I'll try to get this information for you. All right, so most of the answers says 1.5 kilometers or 1,500 meters. Let's reveal the answer to this Do you know how to problem. solve for the time given the distance and the speed? That's what we're learning for today's math video tutorial. Gani and Gio try the zipline adventure at Lake Cebu, Philippines. The zipline runs for two minutes with an average speed of 45 kilometers per hour. How many meters is the zipline? Give it a try and play the video whenever you're ready for the solutions. Here's the detailed explanation to this problem. To begin with, do you know the formula for the distance? To solve for the distance d, we are simply multiplying s times t. So we have distance is equal to s times t. What about if we're solving for the speed s? What will be the equation for s? To solve for the speed, we're simply dividing the distance by the time. So distance over time. And if we're solving for the time, we're simply dividing the distance by the speed. So d over s. The problem is asking how many meters is the zip line. That means we're solving for the distance d. And to solve for the distance, we will use the formula speed times the time. In this problem, the speed is 45 kilometers and the time is two minutes. So using this formula, we will substitute the speed 45 kilometers per hour. For this problem, the speed is 45 kilometers per hour and the time is two minutes. Instead of writing 45 kilometers per hour, I will write this 45 kilometers per 60 minutes. This way I can cancel out the unit minutes. Simplifying this, I will multiply 45 times 2, that's 90, 90 kilometers divided by 60. Now let's simplify 90 over 60. Simplifying 90 over 60, I can divide both numbers by 10, so we now have 9 over 6. Dividing again 9 and 6 by 3, we have 3 over 2, or this is 1.5 kilometers. Since the question is asking in terms of meters, we will multiply 1.5 by 1,000 because 1 kilometers is 1,000 meters. So the answer is 1,500 meters. So the zip line is 1,500 meters. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing. All right, so the answer to that question is 1.5 kilometers or 1,500 uh, meters. Here's our last question. Give it a try as well. This is a math problem um, that I got when I traveled to Bintan, that's the first time that I tried the ATV ride. So try to solve this problem. You also have maybe about two minutes to solve this question. Thank you for participating in the math problem. Um, Eds, Elena, um, Tere Belair, Lane, Rochelle, Marnie Rose, Imelda, Marisa, Daniel, Marichu, um, 
Mitokor have been to Lake Cebu, Zaida, Albert, Joan, Cherry, Jolie, Imelda, Arlene, Patrick, Rhea, Maricar, Teresita, uh, Jobert, Ricky, Carlos, Nelson, Severino. Uh, and we have uh, more answers. So thank you for sharing your answers to that previous math question. At this time, give this a try. It's also solving for the time. While you're solving that, I'm going to give shout out again to all our viewers all over the Philippines. And uh, thank you for spending the night with me. I'll try to finish this, uh, this webinar at 7.25 uh, once we're done with the uh, last math problem. And then the final um, announcement regarding the upcoming webinars and the certificates. So please type your answers in this math problem right now. Do you know how to solve for the time given the distance and the speed? That's what we're learning for today's math video tutorial. Gani tried the ATV ride for the first time in Bintan, Indonesia. His average speed was only 20 kilometers per hour. How long will it take him to travel a distance of 55 kilometers? Give it a try and play the video whenever you're ready for the solutions. Here's the detailed explanation to this problem. To begin with, do you know the formula for the distance? To solve for the distance d, we are simply multiplying s times t. So we have distance is equal to s times t. What about if you're solving for the speed s? What will be the equation for s? To solve for the speed, we're simply dividing the distance by the time. So distance over time. And if we're solving for the time, we're simply dividing the distance by the speed. So d over s. The problem is asking how long will it take him to travel a distance of 55 kilometers. This means that we're solving for the time t. The formula in solving for the time t is equal to distance d divided by the speed s. In this problem, the distance is 55 kilometers and the average speed was 20 kilometers per hour. So divide by 20 kilometers per hour. Now let's simplify 55 divided by 20. 55 over 20 in mixed number is 2 and 15 over 20. Because 20 can go into 55 two times and there is a remainder of 15. So 2 and 15 over 20. Kilometers and kilometers can be canceled out. So the unit now for the time is hours. Simplifying this further, 15 over 20 in simplest fraction is 3 fourths because 15 and 20 can be divided by 5. So that's the same thing as 2 and 3 fourths of an hour or the same thing as 2.75 hours. Since we know that 1 fourth of an hour is 15 minutes, then 3 fourths of an hour is 45 minutes. So Gani tried the ATV ride for 2 hours and 45 minutes. Thank you for watching. So and please consider subscribing. That is the answer for that last math problem. It's two hours and 45 minutes. Again, please take note of this attendance verification code. Uh, please use TLAC or it's 7113. Again, the code is 7113. So you're going to need that for the uh, feedback survey um, to get your e-certificate. 
Again, the code is 7113. So in my math class, I, try, I always try to create math questions that I experience in my travel. So this is one question that I uh, created based on my trip to Malaysia when I tried the helicopter ride hovering the Petronas Tower. Um, also traveling to Florida, USA, when we competed in the math cons competition in Washington and uh, Florida in the past um, four years here in Singapore. Also in California, I also use the Golden Gate Bridge to um, give some questions on Pythagorean theorem and also uh, doing trigonometry uh, questions as well. But we don't have time to answer all of those uh, math problems right now. So these are just some of our um, strategies that we use in today's uh, webinar. So we did some cooperative learning structures and uh, teach like a champion techniques. Again, I will be sharing those um, information on how to order those books who are, which are really powerful in improving your instruction and uh, promoting student engagement. So I will be sharing those information. So again, our three agenda for tonight uh, we did some instructional video analysis and we focused on cooperative learning structure, questioning, and student engagement. We learn and apply some activities to engage students and also we did some math word problems as well. And this Saturday, we are privileged to have two guests from the U.S. We have one from from Arizona, USA, and one from Nevada, um, USA. So if you haven't registered yet, please do so. And I hope that you can join us this Saturday at 11 a.m. So we will try to finish it uh, at after an hour or about an hour. So again, um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And don't forget, the attendance verification code is 7113. Again, thank you so much for joining me tonight in this seventh webinar for a cause. I hope that you can join us on Saturday uh, with our two guests, one from Arizona and one from USA. Again, the code is, you know, what is this? And thank you and have a great night, everyone.